Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have x to the power 4x to the 8th equals 2 and we're going to be solving for x values. So let's go ahead and take a look at this problem carefully. We've done similar problems before. One of the things that you should actually pay attention to is the power of x in the exponent and the coefficient. So we have an 8 and we have a 4. So if you go ahead and multiply the 4 by 2, which is doubling, now we're going to get 8x to the 8th, which is good. That's what we're looking for. And you'll see in a little bit why we are looking for something like that. So let's go ahead and multiply the powers by 2. In other words, raise both sides to the second power. Second power and second power. Now, the rule tells us if you have a to the x to the y, it is a to the power x times y. So we're supposed to multiply the exponents. So because of that rule, we're going to go ahead and multiply these two numbers. x to the power, 4x to the 8th multiplied by 2 is 8x to the 8th. So that was our goal, to get something like x to the power a, x to the power a. Now when we make those numbers equal, then we can kind of use another property of exponents, which is actually the same one that we just used, not another one, but uh, we can use it kind of backwards. So x to the 8th times x to the 8th can be written as x to the 8th power to the power x to the 8th. Because 8 and x to the 8th are being multiplied, we could put the 8 inside the parentheses and put the x to the 8th uh, outside the parentheses. And that's kind of good because now we got the same base and the exponents. So that was our goal. So anytime you get an expression like this, like let's say you have something like x to the power a, x to the power b, then you're basically trying to multiply a by something to make it equal to b. So in this case, it will be multiply or raise both sides to the power b over a because a will cancel out and you'll end up with x to the power b, x to the power b. And that can be written as x to the b to the power x to the b. Okay? Cool, cool. In this case, b is 8. Now, not only is this good, but also on the right-hand side, we have something similar. Because 4, notice that we were able to write it as 2 to the second power. So instead of writing it as 4, let's go ahead and stick with 2 to the second power. And what does this tell you? If x to the power 8 is equal to, I don't know, t, then this gives us t to the t equals 2 to the 2. Okay? And this should tell you at least that there's one solution, and that is t equals 2. So we know that t equals 2 works, but we also got to prove that that is the only solution. So how do we do that? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the derivative of a function, f of t. Let's define it as t to the power t. And I'm going to go ahead and natural log both sides. And then move the t to the front. And then differentiate both sides. And on the left-hand side, you're going to use the chain rule. So ln of a function. Uh, or, or you can think of it as ln u, and that is u prime over u, so you can write it as f prime over f. That's the derivative of ln f of t. And on the right-hand side, we have the product rule. How do you differentiate a product like u times v? Remember the rule. The derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. That is the product rule, and there's something similar for the quotient rule. So it's going to be the derivative of t times ln t plus the derivative of ln t, which is very special, by the way. It's 1 over t multiplied by the first term, which is t. t cancels out, and we end up with f prime equals f times ln t plus 1. Now, f of, f of t is t to the t, so let's go ahead and replace it with that. And we got the derivative of t to the power t. I, I think I, in, in, a, in a short, I proved uh, that this method actually works by looking at it as an exponential function plus a polynomial function, which, which is something that comes from partial derivatives anyways. 
So now this is the derivative. What am I going to do with this, right? I'm going to set this equal to zero. T to the T for real T cannot equal zero. So we want ln T plus one to be zero. So if ln T plus one is equal to zero, this implies ln T is equal to negative one, which implies T is equal to e to the power of negative one. Remember the base is e for natural log. So you can write a little e if you want that, if that's going to be helpful then t can be written as e to the power negative 1. Or t can be written as 1 over e. But that is the, you know, kind of like the x-coordinate. We use that t here, but you get the idea. That is our independent variable, the x-coordinate, the abscissa. Or what is the other one? The ordinate? Anyways, such so weird words. But So this is going to be the x-coordinate of the critical point. So if you make a table... Of values like f prime and f we know that 1 over e is gonna be here that makes the derivative 0 and if t is not think about it if t is greater than negative um, I'm sorry if t is greater than 1 over e uh, so something like let's say 1 if t is 1 then ln t plus 1 is going to be positive so here we have a positive sign and here we have a negative sign which indicates our function is going to be decreasing on this interval and increasing, which is going to make a minimum at t equals 1 over e. So to keep a long story short, let's go ahead and graph this function real quick. I'm sorry, I don't have a decimals graph. I'll just quickly graph it for you. t versus f of t. Now notice that at 0, and by the way, we're, we're trying to graph f of t equals t to the t, which is the super duper exponential. At 0, it's not going to be defined because 0 to power 0 is not well defined but if it were it will be 1 some people say it's 1 but that's not true anyways it's going to decrease first and then increase making a minimum at t equals 1 over e and if you replace uh, t with 1 over e f of 1 over e is going to be 1 over e to the power 1 over e which is e to the power negative 1 over e so that's kind of like a small number obviously that's less than 1 but that's going to be e to the power negative 1 over e for the y value. And our function basically also, okay, here's the point. This is going to be 1, 1. And we're talking about the, the, um, the intersection point uh, of this with 4, y equals 4. So y equals 4 is actually going to intersect is up here. So something like this. And obviously, there's going to be a single solution. Because our function is going to be actually increasing on that interval therefore it is going to intersect a horizontal line at a single point which is going to be at t equals 2. So that means t equals 2 is unique that is the only solution but what is t? t is x to the eighth power let's go ahead and um, set this equal to x to the eighth power and we're going to go from there this is x to the eighth and as you know this uh, this has two solutions x is equal to the eighth root of 2 and x equals the eighth root of 2 but with a negative sign in front of it. Obviously there are two solutions for x and you can go ahead and check them here because you're going to have a positive base and a positive exponent. So it's going to work fine and those are going to be the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then be safe, take care and bye bye.